Alright people, it's about time we get to array lists in Java. An array list is a resizable array that stores objects. You can store primitives, if so you'll be using autoboxing, which we learned about in the last topic on wrapper classes. Arrays are fixed in size, but array lists can change. They're dynamic. Here's how to create an array list. First, we'll follow our similar pattern with creating many objects in Java. Array list, let's say list equals new array list. We will need to make one import. Import java.util.arraylist. Following the type of array list, we're going to use the diamond operator. This has to deal with generics, which is a future topic. But for now, we're going to specify what type of object we're going to be storing within our array list. And you can always use the appropriate wrapper class to store primitives. For example, if you need to store integers, you can say integer. And then we do need that diamond operator after the second array list. You don't also need to specify the data type within the second diamond operator. Java can infer that. You're going to follow this pattern to create an array list. This array list can store integers. You just have to specify that type. So for example, let's take our list and add a few numbers. 3, 1, and 2. And then we can print our list, our array list. I will print our list. And we have three numbers, 3, 1, 2. Now, if you were storing doubles, you would set the type to be double and use the double wrapper class. 3.14, 1.99, 2.0. 0, 1. I'm just making up numbers here. There we go. So let's store strings. Let's create an array list named fruits. We will store the names of some fruit. So the array name is going to be fruits. And then we will print our array list of fruits. Think of some fruit. I will add an apple, an orange, a banana, and a coconut. That should be good enough for this example. And now we have an array list of strings named fruits. Apple, orange, banana, coconut. To add an element to an array list, you can use the add method. Add is a built-in method of array lists. To remove an element, you can use the remove method, then specify an index. So let's take fruits and remove the element at index zero. That should get rid of our apple. Then we have orange banana coconut. If we were to remove the element at index 1, that should get rid of our orange. Apple banana coconut. There's also the set method. Take our array list of fruits, call the set method. At a certain index, let's say 0, we can set that element to be something else. Let's replace apple with pineapple. Replace the element at index 0 with pineapple. Then we have pineapple, orange, banana, coconut, or index one would be apple, pineapple, banana, coconut. That's the set method. With an array list, to get an element at a certain index, you can use the get method, then specify the element number, get the element at index zero. That's going to return apple. Get the element at index one would be orange. 2, banana, 3, coconut. You can also get the size of an array list. Take your array list, call the size method. That will return the total amount of elements within your array list. So my array list has four elements. To sort your array list, you will use the collections framework, call the sort method, and then pass in your array list. Our array list is named fruits. And then you do need to import this class. java.util.collections. After sorting our array list, let's print it. Print my array list of fruits. So these all should be in alphabetical order, starting with A for apple, B for banana, C for coconut, O for orange. So that's how to sort an array list. You can use the collections framework. You could use an enhanced for loop to iterate through all the elements of an array list. So the data type of my array list is strings. 
we specified that type. For every fruit in my array list of fruits, let's print each fruit. And here they are. Apple, banana, coconut, orange. All right, so now we're going to cover an exercise. We'll create an array and accept user input. A user will enter in all the food that they want within this array list. So to help us with this exercise, we will need a scanner. Scanner scanner equals new scanner. Pass in system.in. Import this class. And then be sure to close your scanner at the end because I tend to forget. Scanner.close. We'll need an array list. Again, we'll follow a similar pattern with creating objects. Array list. Let's say list equals new array list. Using the diamond operator, we're going to specify the type of what we're storing within this array list. We'll stick with strings. Let's rename our list as foods. We'll be storing some food. Well, at least the name of food. We'll create a prompt. We'll ask a user, enter the number of food they would like to store. Enter the number of food you would like. And I'll use print rather than print line for the user input. We'll create a variable of num of food to store the number of food that we're going to store. Equals, take our scanner, call the next int method to get the next integer from the user. Once we accept an integer, we should clear the input buffer because there's going to be a new line character within there. Take our scanner, call the next line method to clear it. Let's do a test run. Enter the number of food you would like. I'll just say three. And that seems to work for now. We have the number of food we're going to store within this array list. In my example, let's say I would like to enter three food items. Well, we could use a for loop to iterate three times. We will ask a user to enter in a food three times then. So we can use a for loop for that. Within our for loop, we're going to create a counter of i, meaning index. We could set that to be 0 or 1. Let's stick with 1. We'll continue this for loop as long as i is less than or equal to our number of food variable. If I would like to enter in four food items, this would be four. So we should iterate this loop four times. We will increment i by one during each cycle of this loop. During each iteration of this loop, we will ask for a food item. I'll use print rather than print line. We will ask a user to enter food number, then I'll add plus our index of i, so during the first cycle, i is going to be 1, then 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. Then I'll add a colon, then a space. We'll create a local variable of food. This will be of the string data type. We will set this equal to use our scanner called the next line method to get a line of text from the user. Once we have our string of food, we're going to add it to our array list of foods. So take your array list of foods Call the add method to add an element. We will add our string of food to our array list of foods. And then once we're done, let's print our array list using a print line statement. We will print our array list of foods. All right, let's test it. Enter the number of food you would like. I'll say four. So we should ask for four food items. Enter food number one. I'll say pizza, hot dog, hamburger, and then taco. And here's my array list of food. Pizza, hot dog, hamburger, taco. All right, everybody, those are array lists. An array list is a resizable array that stores objects. You can store primitives. You're just going to use Java's autoboxing feature if that's the case. Once you have your array list, there's various methods to add, remove, or set elements. And well, everybody, those are array lists in Java.